MICO designs, manufactures, and sells hydraulic components and systems, primarily for heavy-duty off-road vehicles and equipment. We have been providing our customers with quality hydraulic and electrohydraulic braking technology and services for over 50 years. Welcome to our series of MICO product training presentations. This presentation covers our line of hydraulic brake locks. To get started, let's discuss what hydraulic brake locks are, what they do, and where they are used. Myco hydraulic brake locks are supplemental park brakes used in conjunction with a vehicle's mechanical parking brake. They provide extra holding by locking pressure in the foundation brakes, keeping them pressurized as if the operator was still pressing on the vehicle's brake pedal. Many commercial vehicles, as well as recreational and off-highway vehicles, require that they remain stationary while performing the functions for which they were designed. Some of these vehicles can be found in the utility, cable television, vehicle recovery, multi-stop, transit, refuse recycling, sanitation, airport ground support, and lawn care industries. In addition to a well-maintained and adjusted mechanical parking brake, experience has shown that at many applications, additional holding is necessary. This can be accomplished using other means to keep all wheels that are in contact with the ground from moving. A Michael brake lock will help immobilize a vehicle for added protection of equipment and personnel in the immediate work area. They perform as operational holding brakes only and are not intended for prolonged parking. There are several types of Myco brake locks. Depending on the model, they can be used on single, dual, split, or anti-lock brake systems. The brake lock you select will depend on the type of brake system your vehicle has. All Myco brake locks significantly enhance a vehicle's holding capability while not interfering with normal service brake functions. Myco 640 series single line hydraulic brake locks consist of lever locks, twist locks, and cable locks. The lever lock is a manually operated one-way check valve that locks fluid under pressure in a single brake line. In dual brake systems, it would provide two-wheel locking. Hand operation leaves the operator's feet free for clutch and gas pedal operation. Lever locks must be mounted within reach of the vehicle operator. A twist lock is functionally the same as a lever lock, except it has a rotary actuation handle and the push rod is sealed in silicone grease for tough environmental applications. The cable lock also functions the same as the lever lock, but is operated with a cable for remote mounting when space is at a premium under the dash. All three of these locks are available in brake fluid or hydraulic oil models and include a low pressure warning switch for added safety. These 640 series brake locks are widely used on forklifts, tow trucks, parcel delivery trucks, and recreational vehicles such as off-highway four-wheelers, dune buggies, sport utility vehicles, motorhomes, and RVs. The Myco 640 series dual lock is capable of locking pressure in two separate brake lines. A dual lock can provide four-wheel lockup on dual hydraulic brake systems or rear-wheel ABS. It can also be used for two-wheel lockup with hydraulic three and four-channel ABS. A dual lock is cable operated, available in brake fluid or hydraulic oil models, and includes two low pressure warning switches for added safety. Myco 691 brake lock systems are state of the art brake locks. They differ from the 640 series brake locks in that they are pressure producing devices rather than pressure trapping. They are electro hydraulic in design and are commonly used as safety interlocks that are activated by other vehicle functions. The Myco 691 brake lock system consists of a user interface, a control module and harness, an electrohydraulic pump, and a remote actuator or actuators depending on the model needed. Hydraulic pressure is locked in the vehicle's service brakes by the pump and actuator. While the system is applied, the electronic control module monitors all aspects of the 691 system, compensating for pressure changes and alerting the operator visually and audibly when necessary. The 691 brake lock is perfect for aerial lift utility and service vehicles, as well as aircraft refueling, towing, recovery, refuse, and recycling vehicles. 
It can also serve as a wheelchair or seat brake interlock on buses, airport ground support, and construction vehicles or equipment. We now know what hydraulic brake locks are, the type of brake locks MICO offers, and where they are used. As mentioned earlier though, the brake lock you select will depend on the type of brake system your vehicle has. The typical hydraulic braking systems in use today vary depending on manufacturer and size of vehicle. For instance, a vehicle equipped with a single system may have a firewall mounted booster or possibly a frame mounted remote booster. The same holds true for the dual and split systems. A rear wheel anti-lock system is actually a dual brake system with an anti-lock valve installed. All wheel anti-lock systems are defined as three channel or four channel systems. To be absolutely sure which braking system your vehicle is equipped with, check it. Look for identifying features such as the number of master cylinder lines, the number of outlet lines from the anti-lock control valve, and dual flex lines at now the rear axle Now let's take a little closer look wheels. at five of the more common types of hydraulic brake systems in use today. As you can see, the first system is quite simple. It is called a single brake system and has a single line from the master cylinder that supplies hydraulic pressure to all of the vehicle's foundation brakes. The single system was used extensively for cars and light duty trucks until 1967. Larger trucks continued using it until the mid 1980s. Today, New vehicles with single brake systems are usually limited to off-highway applications such as forklifts or construction machinery. Single systems may include a frame-mounted vacuum booster in the line between the master cylinder and brakes. A side-by-side -side braking system, also referred to as a steering split or steering assist system, is found on some off-highway vehicles. These systems are actually two independent braking systems. Each is capable of braking only one side, so to get full braking, both pedals must be actuated. This graphic shows a typical side-by-side -side system with two master cylinders, two brake pedals operating independently, a single line from each master cylinder, and a single line to each side wheel. The next system is called a dual brake system or vertical split. It is two independent braking systems one breaking the front wheels, the other breaking the rear wheels. Dual brake systems have replaced single systems in many applications because of the increased safety from incorporating two independent brake subsystems. There are two lines running from the tandem master cylinder and a single line leading to both the front and rear wheels. If there is a failure in one system, the other system continues to operate, providing the vehicle with limited braking capability. As this graphic shows, a typical tandem master cylinder locates two subsystems in a single housing. Some trucks, usually cab over imports, use separate master cylinders. A proportioning valve, often called a combination valve, is normally used in systems containing both drum and disc brakes. These valves direct lower pressures to the drum brakes while allowing full pressure to the disc brakes. Dual brake systems with all disc brakes normally do not require proportioning of brake line pressure. Some dual brake systems utilize load sensing proportioning valves at the rear axle. These valves allow full pressure to the rear brakes in fully loaded conditions and proportionately lower brake pressures when the load is reduced. Other instances may have anti-lock componentry added. The anti-lock brake systems or ABS that we will look at next are based on the dual brake system. Rear wheel ABS first appeared on domestic light duty trucks in the late 1980s. They use a single anti-lock channel to control both rear wheels simultaneously. The anti-lock valve is located in the brake line between the master cylinder or proportioning valve and the rear brakes. With rear wheel ABS, there is no provision for control of the front wheels, but these systems have proved effective in light rear end vehicles, such as unloaded pickup trucks and vans. With rear wheel ABS, high braking pressures can be applied to the front wheels with a greatly reduced threat of locking up the rear wheels. Three channel ABS is next. These systems have been original equipment on most domestic light duty trucks since 1995. They have also been used on several imported medium duty trucks since 1999. 
These systems use an anti-lock valve with three separate control channels to provide anti-lock control to all four wheels. Typically, the front brakes are controlled individually by two separate channels, while the rear wheels are controlled simultaneously by the third channel. Essentially, these systems take rear wheel anti-lock function and add independent anti-lock control to each front wheel. Some Isuzu and Mitsubishi models use one channel for front brakes and individual control of rear wheels. Finally, four-channel ABS provides independent control for each of the vehicle's four wheels. If any of the wheels begin to lock up, brake pressure is adjusted to that particular wheel, allowing it to maintain traction while the other three wheels continue to provide maximum braking. The four-channel ABS valve has four outlet lines, two going to the front brakes and two to the rear. Now that you have seen what the common hydraulic brake systems look like, Let's talk about how MICO brake locks are plumbed into those systems and how they operate. Let's start with a single line brake lock going into a single brake system. This single system diagram shows three possible single line brake lock locations. Position 1 would be used for front wheel lockup and position 2 would be used for rear wheel lockup. Position 3 would be used when four wheel lockup is desired. Here is a dual system diagram. Again, there are three possible single line lock locations shown. Position one would be for front wheel lockup and position two would be for rear wheel lockup. Position three is not an option. The following is a brief explanation of how the lever lock, twist lock, and cable lock function. MICO 640 series single line brake locks are installed in the line leading to the service brakes. In the released mode, the brake lock valve is open and brake system fluid flows freely between the master cylinder and brakes when the brake pedal is applied. In the locked mode, the valve closes and the lock functions as a one-way check valve. Fluid from the master cylinder can flow through the lock to the brakes. But when the brake pedal is released, the pressure remains locked at the brakes as the pressure upstream from the lock returns to zero. Here is a dual system diagram with three lock positions shown. If you are using a dual lock for this application, position three is the only possible location. Four wheel lockup in a dual system is what the MICO dual lock was designed for. MICO 640 series dual locks are installed in a brake system between the last hydraulic component in the supply line and the wheels. They incorporate two manually operated one-way check valves in a single housing. In the released mode, the dual lock valves are open and brake system fluid flows freely between the master cylinder and brakes when the brake pedal is applied. In the locked mode, the valves close and the lock functions as a one-way check valve. Fluid from the master cylinder can flow through the lock to the brakes, but when the brake pedal is released, the pressure remains locked at the brakes as the pressure upstream from the dual lock returns to zero. All MICO dual locks are equipped with two low pressure warning switches. This diagram shows a single 691 system plumbed into a dual hydraulic brake system. In this case, the 691 single actuator has been added into the blue brake line leading to the rear wheels. If the installation called for front wheel lockup, the actuator would have been added to the red brake line leading to the front wheels. Either situation would be for two wheel lockup only. In this diagram, a dual 691 system has been added to a dual hydraulic brake system. The 691 dual actuator has both red and blue brake lines passing through it on their way to the front and rear wheels. This means that both the front and rear wheels will be locked up. Here is a diagram of a three-channel anti-lock brake system that has had a 691 system added to it. A 691 single actuator has been added to the blue brake line leading to the rear wheels. Both red front wheel brake lines now pass through the 691 dual actuator on their way to the front wheels. All four wheels will be locked up. This diagram is showing a 691 system added to a four-channel anti-lock brake system. There are two 691 dual actuators in this application. 
One handles both red brake lines leading to the front wheels and the other handles both blue brake lines leading to the rear wheels. All four wheels will be locked up with this system. Now let's look at how the 691 brake lock system locks a vehicle's service brakes. We start with a 691 in off, released position. The piston and piston stem inside the 691 actuator are in a fully retracted position. In this mode, brake fluid passes freely through the 691 actuator as it travels between master cylinder and brakes. There is no effect on normal service braking. With the control module switched on, the power unit begins pumping fluid into the actuator and the piston begins to move. Initial movement isolates the master cylinder as the piston stem comes in contact with the rubber seat located at the inlet port. At this point, fluid can no longer flow through the port to the master cylinder. As the actuator piston continues to travel down the bore, fluid is displaced to the service brakes and locking pressure is achieved. At 800 PSI, the high pressure switch signals the 691 system to shut off. A check valve in the power unit holds the pressure at the brakes. Should brake locking pressure be reduced to a predetermined level due to thermal contraction of brake fluid or expansion of brake hoses, the high pressure switch signals the 691 system to energize and return locking pressure to the original 800 PSI level. The pressure gauge graphic shows this occurring. During this process, the audible alarm in the control module and vehicle horn, if wired in, would sound briefly as pressure is re-established. When the system is turned off, the pump reverses direction. Fluid behind the actuator piston returns to the pump reservoir and locking pressure in the brakes is released. When brake pressure is released, the low pressure switch signals the power unit to stop. With the actuator piston fully returned, brake fluid can again pass freely between the master cylinder and vehicle service brakes. As you can see, MICO 691 brake lock systems do not interfere with normal service braking. Furthermore, because upstream components are isolated during operation of the 691, there is no effect on master cylinders or anti-lock brake components in the brake system. When dealing with brake lock applications, make sure you understand the intended use. If you feel there is a possibility a customer may use a brake lock in other than recommended applications, there are two points that must be made. First, warn of unsafe applications, such as using the wrong fluid type or trying to lock all wheels with a single lock in a dual system. Second, inform when another Michael lock offers better performance, such as the 691 system for aerial lift applications. Most of all, help the customer be safe. Meeting the needs of our customers is the number one goal at MICO. If you need additional information, please contact us by internet, fax, or phone. MICO is ready to serve you.